Module 5, Site Plan Drawing. Hi, Joe Cerrone here, and we're going to go through this drawing of the architectural site plan drawing here in Module 5. If we scroll down, we have um, a PDF document that serves as a learning guide, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that and open it. And the completed drawing will look like this. It's basically uh, a site plan for a home, residential home, um, with some landscaping and other attributes that will add some diversity to some of our CAD drawings. And it's made up of a number of short assignments that are put together to basically create this drawing. So let's get started. I've got the completed drawing right here and essentially I've put a prototype drawing into the D2L. So if we come back to our D2L and I go and I download the prototype and we'll open that. We'll ignore the unresolved references. That's usually something in a title block like a, an image of Oakton Community College logo. And so if we then take a look at our our drawing, we've started off with the basic dimensions. If we check our units, we're going to be working with feet and inches in architectural. And what we do is we can start off by drawing these basic components for the drawing. And so we have the, the house, which is going to have a 43 by 26 by, uh, the dimensions are a little bit off here, but uh, you can basically see how this is laid out. We lay out the house, we lay out the driveway, and then we place the dimensions on that. And so if we come back to our prototype drawing, we have most of these things here. If we want to, what we can do is we can add some of the dimensions and verify them. And so if we want to verify that this is 26 feet, what we can do is switch our layer to a dimension layer, go to the annotate tab, and this is sort of an automatic dimensioning. I tend to avoid it, but let's give it a try here. And that works just fine. So that tells us that that dimension is correct. It's 26 feet. Let's go and continue that. And this is why I tend to avoid that. I prefer to use a linear dimension which would be either horizontal or vertical. And avoid doing this. Avoid putting a dimension down here where it tracks all the way across the object lines. I mean, we can rectify that by moving the grip point back to here. But it's better to grab it from the end point. And so again, our numbers are coming out fine. We've got 43, 26, and then we can put in some of our other dimensions. So all our numbers are coming out according to plan. Um, as we go through this, I, I don't think it's necessary that I do every single dimension on it for the video, but I think you get the idea. And so as we work on this learning guide, we have sort of a, a foundation that's been established for us with the basic outline of the site and the building outline. 
And so that would be the first component that's been given to you in the prototype drawing. The next component that we're going to do is to do some of the landscaping for the shrubbery. And so essentially what we have is these um, elevation lines from 0, 1 foot, 2 foot, 3 foot, 4 foot, 5 foot, and 6 feet. And then we just have these different patterns for these different landscapes accents. And if we look through the directions, it says, draw the plant symbols shown to the best of your ability. Use object snaps where appropriate. The scale and grid lines are for reference only. It's somewhat of an artistic drawing. And so if we come back to our drawing, I've given you the grid lines to get that started. And so here's our first plant or bush, and basically it's just drawn from a bunch of arcs that have been arrayed. And then if I want to do the, the next plant, I can take a look at this. If we want to increase our magnification level, there we go. We can kind of see that. And it's just somewhat of an artistic expression on creating some shrubbery. And so I'm going to come back to my home. I'm going to go to my landscape. I think I'll just put it on this tree layer. And I'll grab a line. And I'll start from... And you have to be careful with the O-snaps. I'm going to turn them off. And I'm going to just start with this. It goes a little over one foot. I might have to turn off my polar tracking as it seems to be giving me some restraints. And this way my drawing is a little freer. And when I do want to use an O-snap, I'll just shift right mouse click and select endpoint. And so I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'll do some of the other components for that. Shift right mouse click, endpoint. And then I'll do the next. It seems to be some kind of a fern or a cactus. And this goes to about three feet. And when you use O-snaps, it'll keep your drawing clean. It will avoid it having sort of a, a ragged look where the points don't meet. Techniques like using mirror O-snap will give your drawings a more symmetrical look. And so that's the second bush. And then there's two other bushes. And I'm going to go to my finished bushes. Looks like uh, I have some that are slightly different. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to say edit copy with base point and I'm going to copy it into my other drawing. Control V and I'm just going to place that in my drawing. And then the last one, it looks like quite a bit of work um, with all these arcs. And I'll get it started. And so what I would do is start with just some basic arcs. And I would probably say if it's four feet, we'll start by creating some of that geometry. And this is one of those times when you can just see how much patience you have for this sort of thing. There are a number of different types of AutoCAD architectural symbols that you could use if you wanted to. Um, but it just takes on a certain amount of time. And so I'll put a few more in, and then we'll just see what you guys come up with.
I'm hitting the space bar to repeat the command. You can also right mouse click to get these arcs. And I'll just make a little bit of a modification to it and make it like a small tree to kind of drive home my landscape. And so here I've got these different symbols for the architecture. And then the idea would be to create them as blocks or to make them into blocks. And then I can place them on the drawing. So if we look at the completed drawing, whoops, what we have is these tree symbols and a number of these other small plants. And what we would do is insert them as blocks. And so if I come back to my original, what I'll do is I'll select insert and what I'll say is I want to create a block and then I can name it and so I'll say and I'm just going to name tree 1, 2, 3, and 4 and what I'll do is I'll pick the point to insert it and I'll select the objects use a blue window so that you don't get the purple lines and I'll say retain and if you want to put in what kind of tree it is that's where you would put it and I'll say OK and then what I would do is I would go back up here in, in my drawing and place that tree by saying insert more options And I'm not sure why it's hanging up here. I'm going to cancel it. I see why. It's on my second screen. So I'm going to say insert. And then here's my tree one. And I'll say OK. And then I'll place that on the drawing. I'm not sure if this is the exact spot. But since it allowed me to scale it, I can do that and let's take a look at the drawing again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let it scale in one direction so it doesn't get disproportional and so again I'll say insert tree one and then let's go with uh, scale specify on screen uniform scale. Okay, and then when I put that on here, if I had the right one, it would be fine. And we'll say two. And that's that's how we would work with that. Uh, there's some other components in this drawing for the flower bed and things like that, but essentially this would complete the first part of the video where we get things started. We do the layout work for the site plan, which would be to put the exterior dimensions of the house along with the driveway and for the lot and then we have a gas line and a water line that are represented here. And that completes part one of this video.